scripture verse for the study, Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purposes. We're going to really unpack that verse next week. But before we do that, I wanted to go back to the very beginning. I mean back to the very beginning. Let's say like Genesis 1. Because I want you to to see and to experience the vastness of God's plan from the very beginning. He didn't just develop this plan uh, when the New Testament got started. You know, as things were going along and the children of Israel were not following after God the way they should have been, he didn't say, you know what, i got to come up with a plan. I mean, that's kind of what we think. That's not the case. He, he didn't formulate the plan and start it with Jesus. And before Jesus, you know, we're kind of, you know, those, we'll, say, we'll say that was Old Testament stuff. We're not even, we're not going to think about Old Testament. We're New Testament. No, no, no. The glory of God started in Genesis 1-1, what we're going to see. So, this is in the ESV. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created out of nothing everything that exists. The term that theologians use is creatio ex nihilo. You can repeat that if you want. (laughs) Creatio ex nihilo. I think that's Latin. Doesn't that sound Latin to y'all? Maybe we should cut that out because I'm not sure that's Latin. (laughs) It could be something else. It's not Hebrew. Okay, we know that. Creatio ex nihilo. That means creation out of nothing. And you know who can do that? God. If you, if you have uh, been involved in Awakenings long, you have heard me talk about this because this is one of the spiritual truths that I find fascinating and amazing is that only God can create out of nothing. He's the only one that cre- can create matter. He's the only one. Creatio ex nihilo. The word for create in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning God created, the word there is barah. You can say that too. Barah. You can sound like a a Jewish man there, right? Barah. That means create, but it means not. It does not mean form or fashion, okay? It doesn't mean that. It means create out of nothing. I have a picture to show you. My first picture. I have many pictures today. Some of you will recognize this, many of you won't. If you went to the fair this year, then you would have seen these in the educational building. Both my husband and my daughter made a bear out of clay this summer. My husband said, his, as as you are looking at it, his is on the the left and hers is on the right. Um, He claimed his absolutely was better than hers that there was no competition, and that he was going to enter his in the fair, and he anticipated a blue ribbon. This was talked about much in our household. I then, with kind of my daughter's permission, kind of not, uh, took hers over to the fair (laughs) and entered it also. I thought there'd be a lot of stuff, you know, clay stuff, but there wasn't, and there sat those two bears. Now, you will note that my daughter's bear, if you look closely, has a ribbon on it. Now, Alan said much about her bear that it looked like a duck-billed platypus. (laughs) He still couldn't believe it. He actually thought a staff person from the church had taken the the ribbon (laughs) off of his and put it on hers. You get a small check if you win a ribbon. And so we, we actually waited to see who the check came to. He was so convinced that it was coming to him. He talked to the staff. He'd come home and say, I think, you know, one of the worship pastors, he might have moved those, those ribbons. 
the check came to Abby. Okay? We can take some clay and we can mold it, we can form it, we can fashion it, but you know what? God made the clay. We cannot barach. The only subject ever used with the verb barach in the Old Testament, you know who it is? God. You never see another subject with barach because n- nothing else can. So God, in Genesis 1-1, creates out of nothing. Creatio ex nihilo. Scripture is replete with creative miracles. God's all about creative miracles. He's a creative God. Some time ago, Alan and I were chatting with a friend of ours. He was here. He did some meetings um, at the church. And he's an evangelist, travels all over the world and, and prays for people. And uh, in, in our conversation, he had just been in some meetings prior to being here. And um, uh, they were praying for healing. And um, I said, you know, I, I'm, I, I have faith for amazing miracles. And he said we were, that they had, just before being here, they had been praying for a man who had lost his thumb in an accident. And as they prayed for that man, they saw the thumb come back. I want to see that. You don't want to see that? The word says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We somehow think that miracles happened back, you know, when Jesus was around, then they stopped. Let me tell you, that's not the case. I want to see a creative miracle. I anticipate. I mean, I've, we pray for people and we, we see amazing things, amazing healing. But I want to see in front of my eyes matter created. I can tell you, nobody else can do that. God loves to create. Now, verse 2. Now the earth, this is chapter 1 of Genesis, verse 2. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface, surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Here's what I want to focus on today. In verse 1 of chapter 1, God creates, and in verse 2, he orders. He brings everything into an intricate design. The picture we have in Genesis 1, 1 and 2 is a beautiful portrait of something we touched on when we last met, that God is great and God is good. In Genesis 1, 1, we see this beautiful portrait of the greatness, the magnificence of our creator God. We see his bigness, his ability to Bara to create out of nothing. He is able to, to sovereignly create a beautiful, glorious, intricate design where before there was nothing. Here's what I want you to remember today. There is no circumstance in your life that is too chaotic for God. There is no problem too big for the vast, amazing, magnificent creator of the universe to handle. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's mind-boggling. I want to just give you a little bit of a science lesson. So if you need to reach over and get your thinking cap and put it on... We're going to have a little bit of a science lesson. Our sun, which is a star in our solar system, which is part of the Milky Way galaxy, our sun, which is a star, is 93 million miles from Earth. And it is 10,000 degrees on the surface. So it's, it's magnificent. But it would be called by astronomers, an ordinary star. It would be called by astronomers a medium-sized star. Now, it's vast in comparison to Earth. It's vast. 
you could put one million earths inside our sun. One million earths. Another way of looking at that, it help you get your mind around it, um, if earth was the size of a golf ball, it would take about a million golf balls to fill up a city bus. Earth was, earth was the size of a golf ball. We can fit a million earths insti- inside our sun, which is a medium-sized star. Now, scientists with the Hubble telescope, which is a telescope that has circled the Earth 360 miles above the Earth, um, have seen things much larger and much more fantastic than our sun. Um, The one that I want to talk about for a minute is Canis Majoris. I have a picture. This is called the Big Dog Star, the largest that we have found. It's also called the Great Dog Star star. It is so massive. Y'all aren't going to be able to get your mind around this. You could, we could put seven quadrillion earths into Canis Majoris. Seven quadrillion. Let me repeat that. That's not seven million. It's not seven billion. It's not seven trillion. Okay? We can put, we could, seven quadrillion. I don't even know how many zeros that is. (laughs) Do y'all? What's quadrillion? Quad is four. It's more than four zeros, y'all. Seven quadrillion earths can go into Canis Majoris, the big dog star. If earth was the size of a golf ball, It'd take about that number to fill up all of Mount Everest with golf balls. Now, Mount Everest is six miles above sea level. Our God is great, and he's powerful beyond imagining. Psalm 19, the heavens are telling the glory of God. Their expanse declares the work of his hands. He can do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything we can ask or imagine. And he's enjoying doing it. This image is just one of hundreds that have been sent back to Earth by the Hubble telescope. We have seen lots of images. And the the Hubble telescope has the capacity to look deep into outer space, regions, And um, when it did, it it saw this. Um, This is the Whirlpool Galaxy. Um, It's called the Darling of Astronomy. The reason so is that you can get a beautiful picture of the Whirlpool Galaxy because many of the galaxies are angled in in such a way that we they're they're kind of perpendicular to Earth. You can't see them. They kind of look like a line. But the Whirlpool Galaxy is face on. So when the Hubble telescope trained itself on it, it gets the whole picture of the Whirlpool Galaxy. Now, the Whirlpool Galaxy is 31 million light years away. Now, let me, let me break that down a bit for you. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. And at that speed, a beam of light could circle the earth seven times in a second. Okay? So that's the speed of light. And light traveling at 186,000 miles per second, traveling for a year. Okay? So 186,000 miles per second. Not just traveling a second, but traveling 186,000 miles per second for a year will travel 5.88 trillion miles. So a light year is 5.88 trillion miles. That's a light year. And the Whirlpool Galaxy is 31 million light years away. 
okay? And there are 300, you're looking at 300 to 500 billion stars are in that one galaxy. Just one of the hundreds of billions of galaxies in the known universe. The heavens declare the glory of God. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. He spoke and the galaxy was formed. The word says he breathes out stars. In Psalm 33, 6, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. What problem? Here's my question today. What problem could you possibly have (laughs) that God is not big enough to handle? What nothingness, what wasteland, what emptiness in your soul that you are walking through is too empty for God to fill? He's a God who breathes out stars. It'll change your prayer life if you get hold of this. You quit asking small and you start asking big. You know, this man who said he'd seen, they'd seen this man's uh, thumb um, replaced, grow. I said, well, what were y'all praying He said, we were, we were asking for a thumb. I mean, well, you know, you ask not because you have not. We, we were asking for a thumb. Well, now how many of y'all, when you go to pray for somebody, pray for a thumb? Right? It'll impact our prayer lives. if We get hold of the greatness and the vastness of our God. We'll start expecting miracles. We'll start expecting to see God move because we serve a big God. I love Annie Dillard. She's an author that I enjoy. She wrote a book called Teaching a Stone to Talk. And she suggests in that book that we churchgoers, and we are good churchgoers, we churchgoers regularly address the holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. talk that way and we like that but we have no idea of the awesome unimaginable power that we are flippantly speaking of this is her quote it is madness it's like she's speaking to ladies she said it's madness to wear lady straw hats and velvet hats to church madness we should all be wearing crash helmets We should anticipate the greatness of our God. Jesus regularly performed creative miracles. He loved to find somebody who'd been blind from birth, who'd had no sight, and to create sight out of nothing. He loved to do that, and he hasn't stopped. I want to end with one last image. The Hubble telescope was able to look into the very center of the Whirlpool Galaxy. And this is what it saw. There's a black hole there. It's called the white core. And the Hubble telescope was able to pick this up. All creation declares the glory of our God. He is a creative God with power to create out of nothing. I thought of the little song I I used to love. um, My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Does anybody know that? Am I singing to anybody? Like two people. That clearly is an old, old song. I'm very young. I know y'all are thinking, well, that's amazing that she knows that song because of the youth of that woman. There is nothing that your God cannot do. He can create out of nothing. And Genesis 1, 2, and we're going to talk about this 
the next time we meet, says that that God, that vast, that amazing creative God, then desires to bring order. And he hovers. He brings order and then he speaks life. This is what I want you to meditate on as you leave today. We serve the God of God and the King of Kings. Nothing is impossible to him. And he is hovering moving, brooding, soaring over your life, bringing order and speaking life and bringing together all parts of it into a magnificent, intricate plan that he had from the beginning. And that's some good news.